Here is a video clip of a subacromial bursa injection done in long axis. What we see on the image is the hyperechoic subcutaneous tissues of skin and fat, a rather thin hypoechoic lateral deltoid muscle. The hyperechoic line here represents the lateral acromion with the posterior acoustic shadowing below it, since we can't see through bone. Here is the hypoechoic bursal fluid. The rotator cuff is just below that, relatively hyperechoic fibrillar pattern of tendon. Right below that is the hypoechoic or anechoic hyaline cartilage of the joint. And here the hyperechoic line represents the head of the humerus. The injection will come from the upper right hand corner and down to the left. Now the injection is at this point 50 or 60 degrees which is relatively steep and so the needle is difficult to see. You can certainly make out the soft tissues that are adjacent to the needle as they move as the needle passes through them. This will help you identify the needle when you're doing a deeper procedure. Also sometimes the bevel, like in this example, is easier to see because it can be angled up towards the ultrasound probe. As you can see, once the needle tip is in the bursa, I begin injecting and you can see the bursal fluid expand. Right there. Short axis or autoplane injections are most helpful when you're doing very superficial joint or tissue injections. In these cases, there is no skin or soft tissues to travel through and so a long axis approach becomes impossible. You first start out by lining up your target tissue to, at the center of the screen. This will place the target at the middle of the probe. You can use your depth markers to help gauge the tra trajectory of your needle. And essentially in this example here we see the probe, the needle on end, and the ultrasound image that it would represent. What you'll see is you'll see a white dot appear once the needle is under the probe, right in there. And that would be a good spot to inject for this CMC joint. With out-of-plane injections, it's very important that you take the needle and place it right next to the probe when you enter the skin. If you entered the skin about an inch away from the probe, say back here, you have to travel through all of this tissue blindly before you see any idea of the needle on the screen because the needle has to be under the probe to be seen. What we do also in short axis is use a walk down technique. Typically it's better to err on the side of superficial than to go too deep and miss your target. So in this example of the AC joint you start and you may see your white dot appear at A which represents too superficial and you would simply stop the procedure, pull the needle back to the skin, change your trajectory and aim a little deeper. Now you might see the white dot appear at B, which is probably pretty much in the joint but it might be still in the capsule. So you stop, pull the needle back, aim a little deeper and if you see the needle dot appear at C, you know you're definitely in the AC joint and you can inject at that time. Now, the main negative or drawback of short axis injections is all you see on the screen is a white dot. And you can't tell whether or not that white dot represents the needle tip or a part of the shaft of the, the needle. So, as you can see in the three images above, there are three very different positions of the needle below the probe. All three of these images would have the same exact ultrasound image below with only a white dot seen on the screen. You don't know if that dot is the needle tip or some part of the shaft of the needle and your needle tip may be an inch away from your target. So there are several things that you can do to help prevent accidental injections with short axis procedures. Here is an example of a short axis injection of an AC joint. What you'll see is that I stop advancing the needle once I see the white dot appear in the joint. You can even see it here before we start, located right there. Once you see that dot, it's very important to stop advancing the needle. Again, you could continue to advance the needle and your ultrasound image would not change. So once it appears, you stop advancing the needle and hopefully that still represents the tip. What I typically do is advance till I see the needle tip appear. 
I stop advancing, actually pull back a little, the white dot should disappear, and then advance it again, and the white dot should reappear. That reassures me that I'm looking at the needle tip, and then I can go ahead and inject the joint. You'll notice also in this video that the cortisone and some micro air bubbles inside the fluid create a hyperechoic kind of flash that helps confirm that I'm in the joint capsule and the injection of the cortisone filling the joint. So you'll see at the beginning a dot that disappears, reappears, and then I inject. And that is a great technique to use to make sure that you actually are seeing the needle tip and not part of the shaft on the image. There are a few key tips that can make ultrasound guided procedures easier for you and your patient. When I'm supervising and teaching residents and they are struggling with ultrasound, it's usually because they are not using one of these key tips. You need to become ambidextrous. You will get all twisted up with your probe cord and your hands are crossed if you can only use the probe with one hand. So you have to let yourself use the probe and the syringe with either hand to make life easier. It's also helpful to hold the syringe and the transducer like a pen and not like a hammer. So use your thumb, your index, and middle finger to hold those objects. This will allow you to anchor your probe hand to the patient using the ulnar side of your hand because once you have your target image, you don't want your probe hand sliding all over on the gel while you're focused on the screen. It's also helpful to steady your syringe hand on the patient with the fourth and fifth fingers. Just in case the patient moves, the needle doesn't move, and also you can use the fine dexterity of your hand muscles to control the needle very carefully. For some reason, it's common for beginners to get nervous and frustrated during the procedure, and they tend to just push harder with the probe. Unfortunately, this does not help you find the needle. On the contrary, applying too much pressure will likely cause increased discomfort for the patient, since you are probably right over a very painful part of the body, and also applying too much pressure may compress the target fluid you're looking at, such as a joint diffusion or a cyst. And if you collapse the target, it's a lot harder to see it. Also, too much pressure can easily compress a vein or even an artery that you might need to use as an anatomic reference, and certainly you want to avoid some of these vascular structures during your procedure, and if they're collapsed, you can't identify them. You also want to focus on moving only one hand at a time. If you have lost your needle, stop moving the needle and just move the probe to find it. If you're moving both at the same time, it's much more difficult to keep the target and the needle in the image. With in-plane injections, as we talked about, you really have to focus on keeping the needle in line with the probe and pay special attention to this. It'll make your life a lot easier. Now again, as I said before, if you do not see your needle, you should stop advancing it. You are essentially doing a blind injection at that point, and you need to start problem solving where you went wrong and why the needle isn't visualized. Now with very deep injections, you'll have a hard time seeing the, any of the hyperechoic details of the needle. In this case, you want to jiggle the needle without advancing or retracting it. You simply shake the needle slightly in your hand. What you'll see on the screen is the soft tissues that are immediately adjacent to the needle will move on the screen and jiggle with the needle. This will detail the location and trajectory of your needle as well as the needle tip. Another tip is as you advance the needle at a deep angle, you will be able to see the movement of the tissue to identify the needle's location, but in just a static image, it can be difficult to identify the needle. You can also inject a small amount of fluid as you go to help confirm where the tip of the needle is if you are really lost and can't identify the needle tip. There are a few advanced moves that can help make injections easier also. This includes knowing when to use a curvilinear probe, utilizing beam steering technology, using a gel standoff, and tilting the probe, which we'll go over all of these in the next few slides. Typically, a linear probe sends out ultrasound waves perpendicular, and with steeper angle injections, the needle reflects the waves away from the probe, and they're lost, making the needle very difficult to see. Now, a curvilinear probe sends out its waves in a trapezoidal pattern, and some of those waves will reflect nicely off of the needle and be collected by the probe and make the needle easier to see. 
Also, it's worth noting that the Terrason system has the possibility of turning your linear probe into a curvilinear probe by simply decreasing the frequency slightly and switching to the trapezoidal image option. This is a nice function for the Terrason system. Similarly, you can utilize beam steering technology, which controls the angle that the ultrasound waves are sent out of the probe to make a needle or other structure easier to see. A gel standoff may allow a superficial target to be injected using a long axis approach instead of a short axis approach. It is also helpful when you're dealing with very small bony prominences like between the malleoli and the calcaneus, which makes keeping the probe in contact with the skin very difficult. So you can fill this gap in with gel so you can see what's beneath the skin without actually having the probe on the skin. With a gel standoff, you usually place a large amount of sterile gel under one end of the probe and carefully rest the probe on the gel, making certain you don't displace the gel all the way. If you have your target image, you can then begin placing your needle into the gel and you will see that the needle on the screen before it actually enters the skin. You can adjust your trajectory prior to the puncture and advance through the gel into the skin and towards your target as detailed in this HC joint example. Here is gel on either side. What you see here is the actual layer of skin beneath the probe. So the probe is really only touching the skin at this location with gel on either side. So the needle can enter into the gel before entering the skin and into the AC joint. If your patient has excess soft tissues like mine sometimes do, or you're in an area where there's a lot of soft tissues already like the hip, you can learn to tilt your probe to make the e needle a lot easier to see. In this example here, the yellow line represents the skin surface. And in this example, a 45 degree angle makes the needle more difficult to see. So if you compress the soft tissues by pushing the far end of the probe into the soft tissues, you can effectively decrease the angle between the probe and the needle and it makes the needle a lot easier to see. Be careful, of course, not to compress something you're trying to target, and if it's an area where they're very tender, applying too much pressure can hurt. With your procedure room setup, any small changes can make a world of difference, both for your comfort as well as the patient's. In the ideal world, you have everything in the same line of sight. Your probe, your injection, and your screen are all in the same line so that you can just move your eyes up and down between the two. However, most of the time this isn't always possible and you need to have the screen off to the side so you're turning your head back and forth with frequent looking at the patient, looking at the screen, looking at the patient so that you can follow both how the patient's doing, your needle and probe position as well as how does everything look on the screen. It is also very helpful to have a very flexible ultrasound procedure room. You want to have an ultrasound cart which you can move freely around the room, have a chair, procedure table, and ultrasound cart that's adjustable height so you can do injections standing, sitting, and make sure that you're comfortable during the procedure. And it's also handy to have the procedure table that can be moved away from the wall so you can get on either side of the patient if you need to.